This episode is brought to you by King of Beards. This is my online shop where you can find high quality products that will help you grow a strong, healthy beard that not only looks great, but also will smell great as well. Definitely the people in your life that like to get up and close with you are gonna thank you for this one. These are products that I use personally. The link is below in the video description section and if you use my coupon code KING, you'll get 15% off on your first order. But there's a law that has been completely controversial since I can remember. So all women in Saudi Arabia are to have a male wali, which is an official guardian. And this is usually a father, maybe an uncle or husband or even a brother. Now, women are to have their guardians consent for any major activities, like if they want to travel or get a passport or even like getting divorced or getting married and signing other major contracts. But you see, in May of 2017, there was a small victory that was won when King Salman decreed that for some activities, let's say like going to university or getting a surgery, women didn't need the permission anymore from any kind of male relative or their husband. Now this next one has to do with clothing again. There's a lot of these interesting laws that deal with this. But in Saudi Arabia, women are forbidden from wearing clothes that show off their beauty or even wearing a lot of makeup. The law is very strict when it comes to the majority of women in uh, Saudi Arabia. And most of them wear an abaya, which is a long cloak and a headscarf. And the face doesn't necessarily need to be covered. But although if you're wearing clothes that may have a slit in it, showing off maybe a little too much skin, well, I don't know what is considered too much skin because like no skin is really showing. Uh-uh, you can't do that. As well as if you're seen with a lot of makeup on your face, you are gonna be harassed by the religious police. Now the second last law, another controversial one dealing with women and men relationships. Women are actually required to limit the amount of time that they spend with men that they're not related to. Most major buildings and offices and universities and things like that have separate entrances for men and women. Also, public transportation as well as parks and beaches, well, a lot of them, they segregate male and female. Now, if you're caught violating this, it's seen as unlawful mixing and you could be criminally charged, whether you're male or female. And for a final law, for all you dentists out there who for some reason may be thinking of starting a practice in Saudi Arabia, well, if you're not from there, Good luck. Being a dentist in Saudi Arabia is only exclusive to Saudi nationals. However, on the flip side, there are several other occupations and professions that are reserved to just non-Saudis only. Like if you work in a retail sales position or if you're a human resources manager, you gotta not be a national of Saudi Arabia. The Land Acquisition Act of 1894. This act permits the government to deprive landlords of a large section of their land and use it for making public buildings and other things. Originally introduced by the British, the law has always been misused by the government, of course, for acquiring land for their own private projects. Moving on to number nine, we have the reservation rules, right? So in every state in India, they have a special quota or reservation for different sections of people. In India, the reservation can be up to 49%. At the moment, reservations depends upon your caste, gender, as well as your religion. And the law has often been misused by people who do not actually need the benefits and people who really need them end up suffering. Yeah, that's pretty strange. All right, so now number eight, we have the different legal ages for drinking. India has 29 states and every state has passed laws around the legal age for drinking liquor. In Maharashtra state, you can drink liquor, well soft liquor when you turn 21, but you have to be 25 years old to have hard liquor. Each state in India has its own drinking age, which can vary from 18 in Goa to 25 in Maharashtra. However, national law states that no one under the age of 18 can drink at all. Okay, so let's talk about their limitation of knives law. Now, the Indian soldiers are almost all banned from using knives in combat. The Arms Act prohibits any weapon having a sharp edge and capable of causing deadly injury. Well, except for the kirpan that has to be less than nine inches and those are carried by Sikhs. 
Now, did you know in India, attempting suicide is a crime? Yeah, so according to the section 309 in the Indian Penal Code, if you try to commit suicide, you can go to jail for up to one year. Now, if you're successful and you die, of course you don't go to jail because, yeah, you're dead. Now, this is strange to many people because the popular view is that, hey, you know what? Humans should have the right to choose whether they want to remain alive or not. Because after all, we didn't choose to be born. So if we want to choose to end our life, it should be our choice. Hmm, interesting. Now, probably one of the most controversial laws in this episode is the anti-gay law. Now, this law prevents the distribution of non-traditional sexual relationships. And now, it's said that Russia passed this law in order to keep the idea of non-traditional sexual relationships away from minors. Now, this law makes it illegal to equate straight and gay relationships, as well as distribute any sort of material that is on gay rights. So for all you bloggers out there that get more than 3,000 daily visitors and want to remain anonymous because of maybe the content that you're posting, well, guess what? You're not allowed to do that in Russia. Regulations that passed in 2014 actually require blogs that have over 3,000 daily visitors to actually register as a media outlet and give personal data and information. So if you want to remain anonymous, just make sure that your daily visitors don't exceed that number. Now here's an interesting one. President Obama, like the former US president, he's actually banned from entering Chechnya. So Chechnya is a small Russian republic and the former US President Barack Obama is actually really banned from entering the country. The president of Chechnya posted on Instagram that the ban of President Obama was in response to how the US acted in countries like Iraq and Syria. This one's kind of funny, but it comes at no surprise. So all memes that poke fun at political figures, well, of course, Vladimir Putin is definitely banned and outlawed in Russia. Yeah, Putin wasn't happy when he saw that clown face meme of himself. No, that didn't go too well. And the final strange, surprising, and controversial law that I want to share about Russia is that yoga has been banned in several parts. Why? Well, apparently the officials feel that yoga actually promotes the spread of new religions and cults, and they want to really limit the types of religious cults and movements that pop up in Russia. Saudi Arabia. This country, of course, is deeply rooted in its laws, and these laws are based on the religion and traditions of the country. Social laws can be very strict, especially for visitors who are not necessarily familiar with the rules of the land and the culture there. For example, you should refrain from holding hands and any sort of public displays of affection. Also, alcohol is banned. And during Ramadan, the month of fasting, you should not have any water or food visible in public during this time or even visible in your car or you could risk being fined. Media, including books, newspapers, magazines, television and films, as well as online content, are also censored by Saudi Arabian government officials. The Saudi government closely monitors media and restricts it under official state law. Next, let's look at Eritrea. This country is located above the Horn of Africa and has been ruled by President Isaias Efwerki who came into power in the year 1993. Now, the government has full control of the media and over the news as well as control of who writes the news. No news can be broadcasted without approval from the president first, and the religion in the country is also controlled. Since 2004, Eritrea has been designated as a CPC, and what that means is that it's a country of particular concern under the International Religious Freedom Act of 1998, section 402B, for having engaged in or tolerated particular severe violations of religious freedom. 
Coming in at number three, we have Syria. Syria's violence has risen over the years as clashes between government and rebel forces have intensified. The Syrian regime has resorted to a nationwide communications blackout to curb anti-government protests and communications via mobile phones as well as landline phones as well as internet access are restricted and foreign news correspondents are also restricted and media is very closely monitored. Syrian journalists who oppose the government can actually be targeted. From there, we look at Iran at number two. The government of the country is based on religion and Sharia laws. Actions and propaganda against the government are illegal in Iran. Logging into social media websites such as Facebook and uh, various different Google platforms, YouTube and whatnot, is something that you should do with caution. VPNs aren't allowed in Iran. However, it's known that everybody uses them to use Facebook and YouTube and other websites that are blocked in Iran. Even the government is said to know this, but hey, you still gotta be pretty cautious when you're using those platforms. Women are supposed to wear hijabs and cover in public, and Western music is prohibited to be played or performed in public. The country coming in at the number one spot is North Korea. The communist country of North Korea accepts tourists from all over the world, except tourists from South Korea, as well as the United States. Hmm, I never knew this. Also, personal guides that are called minders, they are assigned to every tourist that enters the country. They accompany tourists from the day that they enter to the day that they leave. Literally, they make sure that tourists do not break any rules and regulations of the country. They literally accompany you every single where you go. The administration has complete control over everything, including TV, radio, as well as publication companies. News and television content is censored and only the ruling elite have access to the internet and their online activities are tightly monitored. Traveling is also limited in the country and intimate relations between unmarried couples are not allowed in North Korea. Women in the country are not allowed to wear pants and the communist regime of North Korea, well, it has reportedly outlawed all but 15 non-socialist haircuts and they have instead issued an order for proper hairstyles. So only certain hairstyles can be had in that country.